Welcome to our Gexada Itch and Gexada Knee tutorial. We're going to work on the basics of these two kata. We're going to work on the common mistakes as well as tricks to memorize that will help you learn the kata and to improve your kata. Now, you may be here because you're a white or yellow belt and you're still learning this kata. Maybe you are an instructor looking for new ways to teach. Um, I hope I can be of use. And hopefully when you come away from this video, you will have a better knowledge of these two incredibly fundamental cutters. And at the end, for our usual diehard fans and people who do watch to the end of the videos, we'll talk about the history and the background of these two cutters. But for now, let's get stuck into Gexada Itch. Gexada Itch, uh, smash and destroy number one. I'm going to go through the sequence and first six moves. I'm going to do it first facing you. And the second time facing away so you can follow as though you were following the kata in the dojo. So, starting with yoi, left hand over right for us. Step through, turn. First, you're stepping with the right foot so that you're out the way of the incoming punch. Face block. From here, make sure this is in line just above your forehead. Step through, feet, hips. Hands, punching to the face. Feet together so that you have your shikodachi lined up correctly. From here, block. For us, thumb facing down over the knee. Fix this hand, make sure no chicken wing. Remember, now here's a common mistake. A lot of people step through and they end up with the incorrect hand. So, from here, this leg. Imagine it's lazy, it only wants to do the bare minimum. So it's going to come halfway. There you go. And now you have the correct right hand up and right leg. Stepping through, punching to the face, stepping back and blocking. First six moves of the cutter. And now, as you would see it in the dojo and how you would do it, facing the correct way. Kicks that edge. Stepping forward with that right foot. Turning, left hand, left leg. Right hand, right leg, left hand, left leg. Half a lazy step, right hand, left hand, right hand. An important rule to remember for this cutter is that except for the key eye points, you will have same hand, same leg with all your techniques. Left hand, left leg, right hand, right leg. Same thing here, same thing here. So, if in doubt, try have the same hand matching the same leg. Especially when you're working on your own and you don't have someone around to correct you. Okay, first six moves, you've got this. Let's now move on to the next embusen. So an embusen is a line of performance in a kata. The kiten, uh, it's not a term we use in Gojuryu very much, but I believe our cousins in Shotokan do. It's a place where the kata begins and ends. Don't focus too much on the kiten, but I do want you to know the word embusen because it is important to show your understanding. So, we are now changing embusen, going forward in the kata. From here, you look forward because that's where you're going next. Left hand, left leg. Feet, hands. From here, good quality maigiri, please. Kicking for lower stomach bladder and landing in a good long stance. So from here, one, two. Uh, depending on your school, there may be a stomp there. Now here's a good place to show you hip vibration. Elbow. Make sure that elbow is pointing forward like a laser beam. Don't want to expose that armpit. One of my students said the other day, the chicken will eat your armpit, which I thought was adorable. Make sure that that elbow is forward. Your hand is turned towards your face. You're not punching over your shoulder. That's in a later cutter. For now, your hand, like you're holding an old school phone. Yeah. Drop that elbow to give you the whip for the hurricane. Big get on barai. And from here, um, as you get more advanced, you start to understand. It's a good place to show your hip vibration and your ki eye point. I'm not going to ki eye too loud. I'm wearing a mic, so I'm just going to make the normal bird sound. Hey! Not my normal ki, I promise. This is in line with your chamber hand, aiming for the ribs. Don't punch the floor, it hasn't done anything to you. Don't punch the shoulder, don't punch the ceiling, rib height. From here, we're gonna to change to the back. 
The next most common mistake I see, from here, often students step all the way and they are facing the wrong direction. So here's a little trick to remember how. From here, your back foot is going to come and say hi to the front foot and then they're going to go away from each other. So quick hello and bye bye. So feet are in high Dutch and fingers are at eye height. This hand is in chamber. One more time. The foot at the back is going to come say hi to the foot in the front. They touch briefly and you step out. Again, small differences between schools. Some will have a more exaggerated sweep there. I have seen all the way up. But again, do what your sensei says. For us, the sweep is only there if you know what you're looking for. Otherwise, it's not super obvious. Feet in high Dutch, like railway tracks underneath you, parallel stance. Let's do that facing away from the camera, like we would in the cutter, so you can follow. From here, look forward. One, two, high quality. My Gary, land, elbow, uraken, get on barai, key eye point. Foot comes from the back, touches the front. Why only one chest block to the back? This cut is designed to be symmetrical. So if we did two blocks to the back, we would end up kicking with the left leg again. So to help yourself or your students remember, only one chest block to the back so that the right leg gets a turn with the Maigiri uh, combination. So from here, adjust that foot slightly. Stomp if you're supposed to, or don't stomp if you're not supposed to. When we have our mats down, we encourage our students to stomp. When we have our mats up in the summer on the wooden floor, no stomping, because especially for kids, we don't want that long-term heel damage. So from here, so elbow forward. Keep that elbow pointing forward like a laser beam up the elbow, drop it for the hurricane, get on barai, and punch. From here, we use our trick again to make sure we stay on the right foot. Now you're at the end of the cutter. You pretty much, you only have two moves left, and here we see quite a few errors. So I'm going to walk you through uh, common mistakes and tricks to remember which hand is on the top and which hand is on the bottom, and we're facing the front. From here, turn, keep this hand facing down. Keep those palms facing down, this way the correct hand is on top. Close those fists, and then from here, the trick I use to remember which one is which. From here, bend that bottom leg. The bottom hand and the bent leg go together. So this arm you'll see is more bent, it goes with the bent leg. This arm is straight. It goes with the leg that is straight. So not this, but this. Okay, with us, bladder, solar plexus. Some schools you may see it this way. With us, it's a small move, not, I mean, what are you aiming for here? This, step up, feet together. Okay. This is the basic version. So if you're green, blue belt and high, you're not supposed to stop here. But when you are learning, it's okay. Turn your steering wheel, step straight back, pull the hands back, and now double punch. Bent hand is with the bent leg, straight arm is with the straight leg. So from here, open. And like a butterfly landing on a rose at midnight, that hand lands softly, come forward, straighten up. One, second move, two, three, four. And you're going to do this one day when you're a black belt in Seipai Kata again. I hope if you're watching this, you'll become a black belt one day. That's the goal, isn't it? Let's get started. I'm going to go through the sequence one more time. If you're happy with your sequence, click on the chapter below to jump to. Get But let's go over it one more time together. I'm going to face away from the camera so that you can follow me so that you have the same hand, same leg that you would have if you were performing this cutter yourself. So, let's go. Kekzarech.
Let's quickly cover the four moves that are different in Gexidani. We've just finished our first uh, key eye point. Now we're going into the double hand block. Some schools this way, some schools this way. But as split the difference 45 degrees. It's very easy to make this look like a cat on a hot tin roof. Glide, block, glide, block. As you get more advanced and more comfortable, then you can start making the hands and feet go very close to the same time. But when you are learning, please break it down. One, two. I can't remember where I saw it, but I saw a phrase, slow, smooth, smooth is fast. So when you are learning, go slow, you'll become smooth, and then you become faster in the end. So from here, one, two. And eventually it should look like this. Slow, fast, faster. Making sure sanction stays correct. And when you are learning, make sure you look down, check your sanction's in the right place, that this hand is returned to the right place. But it's okay to take it as slow as you need to to learn. Karate is long, life is short. So there's really no rush in learning anything in karate. Rather, take the time, one, little bit faster, little bit faster. Make sure everything is perfect. From here, now, step back in a Zen Kutsudach and drag your foot into cat stance. Pick up a book. The book is boring. Elbow, face, mosquito, stomach, mosquito, dead, mosquito. From here, slide across, stay low. Try not to. Stay nice and low, keep the hips low, the rest will follow. From here, across, pick up a book, book is boring, face, mosquito, stomach, mosquito, dead, mosquito, turn and face to the front, one. I had an instructor once tell me that at the end of the cutter you should grow like a tree, because if your cat stance is low enough, you should come up, one. Two, three, four. Ooh, that was a lot of cracking and popping. Okay, <laughs> common errors, wrong hand at the top, wrong hand at the bottom. So let's go from here. To make sure you always have the correct hand, the bottom hand is closest to the knee. Wrong, right. One, two, three, four. Five, bottom hand is closer to the knee. Now, I don't want to see Kamehameha's or Hadoukens. I don't want to see any of that. I want to see elbows in close to the body, fingers pulled back. You want those wrinkles in the back of the wrists. From here, your kata should look like this from the side. Striking, basic bunkai, shoulder and hip, grown up advanced bunkai, Groin and face is the understanding. Fingers together, please. Thumb, um, palm strike and palm strike. Uh, Sensei Mario at our brother dojo palm court is always saying, <clears throat> push the pinky palm and the thumb palm forward. That automatically will correct the angle. This is a beautiful move, it's worth getting right. So for those of you still here, how's it? Um, let's talk about the history of this cutter and Gexadani. They were both developed in wartime. They're actually relatively young cutters compared to the rest of the syllabus. You're looking at the 1920s. Um, obviously, as I edit, I'll put in the correct date somewhere on the screen. When you consider the context in which this cutter was developed, it was developed in a time of war. It's, it's a cutter for violence. Let's not forget that this cutter was designed to teach someone the basics to block and knock someone's lights out. It's not a pretty cutter. The most important thing is, is when you perform this cutter, I'd like you to keep in mind the context in which it was uh, developed. It's also the only cutter in our syllabus where we step forward to finish. It's an aggressive forward movement. All the other cutters, we step back to finish. Yes, there is still no first strike. It starts with a block. But if you know your bunkai, that first move can also just be smashing someone in the throat. So uh, if you'd like to see those bunkai, the links will be in the description as usual. When in doubt, please refer back to your sensei, refer back to your dojo. You know what? 
I hope you found this video useful. I hope it helps you develop your Gexada Itch and Gexada Knee, not just for grading purposes, but because this cutter is going to be with you for a long, long time. You're going to do this cutter thousands of times. It will become your oldest friend. You're going to know this cutter inside and out, back to front. We actually did a video on how to do this cutter inside out just to test your knowledge. And when it gets a bit stale, to make it, to invigorate it a little bit. My husband is better at asking for the like, comment, and subscribe. I've stumbled over it, I don't know how many times trying to say it. So please, if you like what we do, like, comment, and subscribe. We have a few affiliate links now in the, uh, in the bottom. Please check them out. Slowly growing our channel. We're so grateful that you're here. Thank you to those of you who are still watching because those are the real fans. And we love your comments. I promise we try to respond to every one of them. Anyway, in the true millennial greeting, Please like, comment and subscribe and hopefully we'll see you back here next week. Arigato gozaimasu! Straightforward. From here, open and like a butterfly landing on a petal at moonlight. Open. And now we are facing the back of the dojo or the back of the cutter. Make sure that hand chamber hand doesn't go and do its own thing because you're focusing on the feet. I suck at ending videos. I really am bad at this.